Welcome to Tabletop Island. I'm Bernardo, your host, and today we're going to be taking a look at the vintage board game. Wait for it. Silly Safari. This game came out in 1966 by Topper Toys. This looks interesting. Let's first take a look at the components here. First off, on the table, this game looks absolutely amazing. It is almost like a mousetrap style game with a ball bearing that activates a trap. You can kind of see where we're going here with this. You start off with your little pawn pieces, which are really well made, but they are feet. I know, they're feet. Huh. I wonder why anybody would be barefoot in a safari. It's so stupid. So the player rolls the highest is going first. You start at your starting point to go all the way around. Your goal is to make it to the finish. When you make it to that finish, the first player gets a two animal bonus. The second player gets a one animal bonus. And then once everybody finishes, the player with the most animals wins. Now here's how you can get animals. When you land on a foot spot that has a white dot on it, that means you get to activate the silly trap. Now this is where things can be fun. So let's take a look here. You are rotating the trap itself from its little circle point to land on an area where you're currently at. If you're in the territory with the elephants, then that means that's what you're going to be setting the trap up for. So you're lining it up perfectly to attempt to land on an elephant, and then you are pushing down onto the bird's tail. The monkey is unhinging from that, hitting the ball bearing to roll down the tree to eventually land on the alligator's mouth, who will then flick and rotate the giraffe, which will release the cage from the vine and land on the animal. If you're able to capture it, then you get to add it to your collection, even if, even if only a part of it is captured. Now, I know this sounds absolutely amazing, but much like Mousetrap, this doesn't happen as frequently as you would like and the rule says if you don't get it or for whatever reason the trap doesn't activate then you miss your shot and that's not fun because that happens a lot more than i'd like to admit so i do allow players to attempt to do it again because i'll be honest with you getting your perspective on the cage is enough and sometimes it doesn't line up perfectly for you and honestly it's already a ridiculous idea so just going with it is kind of what i like to do here because again the trap is extremely fragile it can go off just by accidentally bumping it too hard the table you even again have that issue of the monkey swings and sometimes he even misses the ball baron which kind of just ruins the whole effect of the silly trap so that part itself again much like mouse trap it just isn't that practical but it looks amazing and it's obviously hilarious and interesting to look at but again it's not really a situation i like to be in the other areas in which you get are certain bonus areas they can either give you another turn or even another animal for free which is awesome but there are also red spots that can kind of screw you over, like take away one turn, even two turns, and then sometimes returning an animal, which can be really frustrating. There's even a spot on the board itself that has a stockade, which puts you in the stockade area, and you, it's almost like going to jail in Monopoly, where you have to roll a 6, 3, or a 1 to escape. Now, if it ends up being your third attempt for it, you escape anyways, which means you advance to the brown foot spot, and then take a turn to get back onto the trail. Because that does kind of put you close to the uh, home spot which again is also really annoying now there are points where it can drag on depending on what you roll but again the game can go by pretty quickly again as long as you're kind of moving through and there's certain things in the game that are again a bit frustrating so this in itself isn't the kind of game that I would go for. I actually got a pretty good deal for it I got it for about $35 I know that's pretty high for a game like this or 
I guess if you're really into vintage collecting, it's pretty low for this game, um, but the game just isn't really worth it for me. I think you'd probably have a better time trying to get Mousetrap to work than getting this to work because, again, it's extremely fragile. That little rotating wheel, sometimes when you rotate it, it can still activate the trap by accident, and I've played with a couple of them. This one was complete, which was awesome to get, and I am able to activate the trap. It's just, again, it's not that practical, much like almost every one of these trap board games from this era. But again, that's that's all I have for you guys today. It's easy to teach. It is fun for the whole family, but again, it's extremely frustrating, and this is not the kind of game I would recommend. Again, you'd probably have a better chance working and trying to get the trap for mouse trap to work, and it's a lot more accessible than this game. Again, it looks great on the table, but if this sounds like the kind of game for you and you enjoy having these kinds of games in your collection or you just like ball bearing games like Luke from Down from the Attic, this may be the kind of game for you, but it's not the kind of game for me and I would not recommend it simply due to the fact that it's really frustrating and the trap is just too fragile. But that's honestly all I have for you guys today. If you are interested in notifications, there is a bell up there somewhere. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate any feedback. I'm trying to make these videos more and more outrageous and with your guys' help, I have been doing so monday regular board game reviews wednesday weekly update slash talks and then on friday is my vintage board game reviews that is all i have for you guys today i'll see you guys next time